Now, if the region that you want to integrate over uh, can be a both a type one or a type two region, then there are actually two equivalent ways that we can write down a double integral that describe the area. So let's look at an example. Okay, D is going to be a triangular region with vertices 0, 0, pi, zero, pi over 2, 0, and pi over 2, pi over 2. Okay, so the vertices are 0, 0, pi over 2, 0, and pi over 2, pi over 2. And that's going to make this triangular region, we're going to call that region D. Now, there are two ways that we can approach this integral. The first way is to think about it as a type 1 region. So we, wa uh, we want to integrate x cubed y plus cosine x dy dx so that this would be a type 1 integral. And in order to describe it that way, we recognize that the x is between 0 and pi over 2. And then the y, in this case, is between 0 and the line y equals x. So the two functions that bound this region are y equals 0 and y equals x. So we can integrate from 0 to x. The function we want to integrate is going to be x cubed y plus cosine x, and we want to integrate that dy dx. So let's just go ahead and work through that and figure out what that's going to end up being. Okay, I'm going to have the zero integral from 0 to pi over 2 still. I'm going to integrate dy, so x cubed y is going to become 1 half x cubed, because the x cubed is just a constant, y squared, and then the cosine x is just a constant, so this becomes y times cosine of x. I want to evaluate that between 0 and x. Okay. Now, this becomes, let's see, the integral from 0 to pi over 2. And what I'm going to have here is I'm going to substitute in y equals x, so this is 1 half x to the fifth plus x cosine of x. When I substitute in 0 to y squared, I'm going to get 0, and when I substitute 0 into y, I'm going to get 0. So this is what I have left. I'm going to integrate that dx. Now, let's integrate that. So this will be uh, x to the fifth times one half becomes x to the sixth over 12. I want to evaluate that between 0 and pi over 2. And then I need the antiderivative of x times cosine x, which actually is not necessarily a lot of fun. You're going to have to integrate by parts, letting u equal x and dv equal to cosine x. I'm actually going to spare you some of these details. Um, that's going to be plus the antiderivative, which is x sine of x plus cosine x. And then again, I'm evaluating between 0 and pi over 2. Okay, So I expect that you can, at this point, integrate by parts on your own. Okay, we're going to substitute all that in, so we're going to get pi to the 6th over 2 to the 6th times 12, also known as 768, and then plus, okay, I'm going to plug in pi over 2, so pi over 2 times sine of pi over 2, which is 1, okay, plus cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. Okay, and then uh, when I subtract, because I'm substituting in 0, uh, things like x to the 6th become 0, x sine x, of course, becomes 0, but cosine x, when I subtract, cosine of 0 is 1. So my final answer is pi to the 6th over 768 plus pi over 2 minus 1. That's if I consider the integral as a type 1 region. But now let's think about it a little differently 
as a type two region where we integrate dx and then dy. Well, that becomes interesting, okay? Because here, when it was a type one region, we were thinking about the fact that we were integrating from zero up to x. But now we're gonna integrate from a lower function Okay, to an upper function, and the question is, what are those functions? Well, the lower function is x equals y. The upper function is going to be x equals pi over 2. So if I think about this as a type 2 region, I want to integrate. Again, the, the y is now going to be between 0 and pi over 2, but the x is going to start or sorry, yeah, the x is going to start at y, okay? So we're integrating from x equals y to x equals pi over 2. And we're integrating, of course, x cubed y plus cosine x dx dy. Okay, so this is slightly different than what we had before, okay? Uh, before the inner integral was from zero to x because y went from zero to y equals x. Now the inner integral is from y to pi over two because x is ranging from y to x equals pi over two. Okay, let's see if we can do that integral. That integral is going to be integral from zero to pi over two now I'm going to integrate dx, so that's going to be 1 fourth x to the fourth, the y is just a constant, so it stays there, plus the antiderivative cosine x is sine of x. And we're going to evaluate that between y and pi over 2, integrating dx. So this becomes the integral from 0 pi over 2. Let's substitute in. We're going to substitute in x equals y. So this is going to, sorry, x equals pi over 2. So this can become 1 fourth times pi over 2 to the fourth times y plus the sine of pi over 2, which is 1, okay, minus now we're going to have a 1 fourth y to the fifth and then plus the sine of y. All that we're going to integrate now d y. I think I made a mistake here. I'd integrated dx already, so this one should have been a dy. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, let's uh, clean this up a little bit before I do the integral. Okay, so I'm going to get uh, 1 fourth times pi to the fourth over two to the fourth. So four times two to the fourth, that's going to be 64. And that's gonna give me a width times y, okay, plus one minus one fourth y to the fifth minus sine of y. D y. Okay, now I got to actually do that integral. Okay, so I'm going to get a, let's see, we're going to do pi to the fourth over, uh, let's see, 128 8y squared plus y minus 1 over 24 
times y to the sixth. And then the, the antiderivative minus sine y is a cosine y. Okay, we're going to evaluate that between 0 and pi over 2. Okay, so when I plug in pi over 2, I'm going to get a pi to the 6th now, pi to the 4th times pi squared, divided by 128 times 4. That's going to give me over 512. Okay, but, oops. That's plus pi over 2, because that's what y is, pi over 2, minus 1 over 24 times pi to the 6th over 2 to the 6th, which is 64. And then I'm going to do plus cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. Then I'm going to subtract off everything evaluated at 0. I get a whole bunch of zeros, but I do have that cosine of 0, which is 1. So finally, uh, the pi to the 6th over 512 minus 1 over 24 times pi to the 6th over 64. That ends up being pi to the 6th over 768. And then I have a plus pi over 2 and then minus 1. And the answers actually match. Okay, So I integrated this function over the region as a type 1 region, so dy then dx. And I got the same answer as if I integrated it over a type 2 region, dx dy. Now I would like to look at just two more examples where it is important to understand that we can switch the order of integration. Okay, That actually we will not be able to do this integral unless we switch the order of integration. So I'm looking at the integral from 0 to 6 and then from x over 3 to 2 of x square root of y cubed plus 1 dy dx. So I need to find the antiderivative of the square root of y cubed plus 1. And I can't find an antiderivative of square root of y cubed plus 1. I just don't have an algebraic function that I can write down that I can take the derivative of that's going to give me square root of y cubed plus 1. So what that's going to signal to me is that I should draw this region out and I should see if I could switch the order of integration. Okay. So what I see here is I'm integrating from x over 3 to 2 dy. Okay. So I'm integrating from y equals x over 3 to 2, to y equals 2, and I'm integrating that dy. So this is what I'm the region I'm integrating over dy. So what if I was to change it so that I'm integrating this way as a type 1 region dx? Okay, so I'm going to instead integrate not from y equals x over 3 to y equals 2, but from y, uh, x equals 0. Okay, so this side here is x equals 0 to x equals 3y. Okay, this is the same as x equals 3y. But if I, if I integrate that, let's see, I'm going to integrate square root of x, x y cubed plus 1, I'm going to integrate that dx, then the y's are going to be between 0 and 2. Okay, so I can actually switch the order of integration, and that might help me be able to find the integral. Okay, 
So let's see why that would be the case. Well, I'm going to integrate, let's see here, from 0 to 2. Now I'm going to integrate dx first. Okay, so I'm just integrating the x because everything else is just a constant. So I'm going to get 1 half x squared times square root of y cubed plus 1. And I'm evaluating that between 0 and 3y. And once I'm done, I'm going to integrate that dy. Okay, well, let's do some simplification, 0 to 2. Okay, I'm going to plug in the 3y, so I'm going to get uh, 9 halves y squared times square root of y cubed plus 1. And then when I subtract, I'm going to plug in x equals 0, and that's going to give me 0. So I'm going to integrate that now dy. Ah, well now I can do a u substitution because y in this case is, or, or u could be y cubed plus 1, and then du can be 3y squared dy. So if I do that u substitution, that integral now goes from 1, because if I plug in y equals 0, then u is 1, to 9, because if I plug in y equals 2, then I get 2 cubed plus 1, which is 9. And then I'm integrating, okay, uh, this becomes a square root of u, or u to the 1 half. And then when I get rid of the 3y squared dy, what I'm left with is just 3 halves. I'm thinking about this 9 as being 3 times 3, so that I can uh, replace 3y squared dy with just the du. Okay, well, now that kind of works out because the derivative of, of u to the 3 halves is 3 halves u to the 1 half. And evaluate that between 1 and 9. Okay, and so I'm going to get, uh, let's see, 9 to the 3 halves is 27. And 1 to the 3 halves is 1. So 27 minus 1 or 26. So here I had an integral that I was not going to be able to do because I cannot find an antiderivative for square root of y cubed plus 1. But lo and behold, if I switch the order of integration, I can, in fact, do the integral. Okay, let's look at a second one. Okay, this integral, a double integral, is from 0 to 1 and then from x to 1 of e to the minus y squared dy. Okay, so we're integrating from y equals x to y equals 1. So y equals x is this line to y equals 1, which is this line. Okay, And so that's how we can construct our region. x, as you can see, goes from 0 to 1. Okay, And I'd like to do this integral, but there's a big problem in, in that I can't find an anti derivative of e to the minus y squared. Okay, There is no known algebraic function that I can write down whose derivative is going to be e to the minus y squared. So I'm going to just try to see if I can switch the order of integration to see if that's going to do anything. Okay, So I'm going to have a double integral, but now if I'm integrating this way, that's going from x equals 0 to x equals y. So it's going from x equals 0 to x equals y. And then uh, y is going to go from 0 to 1. So this is an integral of e to the minus y squared. Instead of dy, it's going to be dx dy. Okay, x goes from 0 to y, y goes from 0 to 1. Okay, let's see if we can do this integral. So the integral from 0 to 1. Okay, e to the minus y squared is just a constant. Okay, so when I integrate, I'm going to, uh, with respect to x, I'm going to get x e to the minus y squared. I'm going to evaluate that between 0 and y. And then I'm going to do that integral when I'm done, dy. OK, so let's uh, substitute that in. Integral from 0 to 1. I'm going to substitute in uh, x equals y. So I'm going to get y e to the minus y squared. 
Then I'm going to substitute in x equals 0, so I'm going to get 0. So that's the integral I now want to do dy. OK, well, I can handle this one. OK, I can, I can find an antiderivative now for y e to the minus y squared. I can let u be a, uh, I'm going to let u be minus y squared. And I'm going to let du equal minus 2y dy. OK, so when I do that, I'm going to rewrite this integral as, OK, I'm going to replace uh, y dy with negative 1 half du. So this is going to be negative 1 half e to the u du. Um, when y is 0, that's going to give me u equals 0. When y is 1, that's going to give me u equals negative 1. OK? Um, if we like, we can use the minus sign to switch the order. This could be the integral of 1 half from 0 to 1 e to the u du. Sorry, it's not from 0 to 1. It's from negative 1 to 0. OK, so I can switch. Um, I can switch the limits of integration, substituting out that minus sign. OK, that's another way to write this. OK, the antiderivative e to the u is just e to the u. OK, so I'm going to get 1 half e to the u evaluated between negative 1 and 0. So in fact, I'm going to get 1 half e to the 0 minus e to the negative 1. Another way to write that is 1 half times 1 minus e to the minus 1. OK, again, I could not have done this integral the way it was written because it was an integral uh, dy first. And I cannot find a function whose derivative is going to be e to the minus y squared. OK, so I looked at what happens when you switch the order of integration. OK, so if you get stuck on an integral like this, uh, and you cannot find a proper antiderivative, uh, maybe you should switch the order of integration. Or if the region just seems odd described the way that it is, maybe you should look into switching the order of integration.